Well, time now for the day in sport with Darren Murrow. Darren, Australia's wicketkeeper looking to prove the doubters wrong. He certainly is, Janison. Good evening to you. Tim Payne says he understands the criticism surrounding his selection for the first test against England in Brisbane. The Tasmanian will play his first test in seven long years as Australia commences its bid to reclaim the Ashes. Tim Payne was on the verge of quitting first class cricket last year. I was going. I'd, I was going to go to Melbourne and, and work for Kookaburra and just focus on um, playing 2020 with that uh, Hurricanes. Twelve months later, he will line up behind the stumps for Australia. I've said myself I was surprised, so uh, for me to say that I'm, I'm not would be a lie. He's got my 110% backing. Um, he provides a lot of energy around the group. He's a good leader. The 32-year-old has received support from players past and present. Hey, Chris Rogers gave me a good piece of advice. He, he told me to, to set my standards low and expect to get six ducks, and he said anything after that's, anything after that's a win. So. Payne's selection, along with the decision to recall Sean Marsh for the eighth time, has been questioned by former greats. Uh, some of the things that have come out potentially from, uh, from ex-players is a bit disappointing. Um, but in our team, in our inner sanctum, um, we know that this team is good enough. We know what we can do. Usman Khawaja returns after being dropped in Bangladesh for the sixth time in his career. I don't hold it against anyone. I'm not angry at anyone. I'm just going out there and trying to play some cricket. I'm representing Australia. I'm pretty happy. Confidence is high in the squad ahead of the series opener at the Gabba, which begins on Thursday. Australia hasn't lost a test at the venue in 28 matches, dating back to 1988. We know the conditions well. We're used to the pace, the bounce, um, whereas the opposition's not, so um, always adds in our favour. Adrian Archuli, SBS World News. Elise Perry says it's important Australia's women's cricket team responds in tomorrow night's final Ashes encounter against England. The tourists can draw the multi-format series with a victory after a 40-run triumph in Canberra yesterday. Australia hasn't won a 2020 series since 2015. To football, and Matilda's striker Sam Kerr believes China will provide a much-needed test ahead of next year's Asian Cup. Australia's women's national team will play China twice over the coming days. Well, two months ago, the Matildas drew a record local attendance of just under 17,000 fans in Newcastle against Brazil. Kerr is hoping for an even bigger attendance for the opening game against the Asian Giants in Melbourne on Wednesday. I've said a few times leading up to these games, if they don't beat Newcastle, then the sporting capital of the world is gone. So I'm expecting more than 16,000. Kerr has been in strong form leading into the series. The Glory Strikers scoring a double in yesterday's win over Melbourne victory. And of course, you can catch live action of both the Matildas matches. Tune into SBS Viceland for the opening game. Our telecast commences on Wednesday from 7.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And then on Sunday on SBS, it's the clash in Geelong. Coverage kicks off from 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. There'll also be live streaming of both games on the World Game website. Sydney FC coach Graham Arnold isn't thinking tomorrow night's FFA Cup final against Adelaide will be his final match in charge of the club. Arnold is believed to be the front-runner to becoming Socceroos coach if Ange Postacoglu steps down from the role. Postacoglu is expected to make a decision on his future by the end of this week. <laughs> Next question. I'm a good friend of Ange's, I'm a good supporter of Ange's, but anyone who knows Ange knows he's his own man. And you know, people even close to him wouldn't even know what he's doing. Arnold was quick to apologise after arriving half an hour late to today's pre-match press conference. In Rugby League World Cup news, Regan Campbell-Gillard says there won't be any split loyalties when Australia faces Fiji in Friday's semi-final. The Penrith prop turned down an opportunity to represent Fiji before receiving a late call-up for the Kangaroos. He says the squad is mindful of the danger posed by Jared Hayne for the clash in Brisbane. Yeah, we've got to stop him. He's a... Yeah, very uh, skillful and powerful player across the whole park. So, um, yeah, we'll probably have to shut him down and then you know, in their middles as well. Tonga take on England in Auckland in the other semi on Saturday. And Mitchell Pearce insists leaving the Sydney Roosters is the best decision for his career. The club ended weeks of speculation by granting its 238-game veteran halfback a release from the final two years of his contract. The move comes a fortnight after the Roosters lured Cooper Cronk on a two-year deal. Pearce is expected to join Manly. 
And finally in sport, Grigor Dimitrov has claimed the biggest title of his career, winning the ATP Tour Finals in London. The Bulgarian overcame David Goffin in three sets. The 26-year-old is the first player in 19 years to win the tournament in his debut appearance. Dimitrov is setting his sights on higher honours in 2018. If I want to start winning even bigger titles and be even more consistent, I definitely need to, uh, need to keep improving. And I'm absolutely satisfied with those two weeks that I did here, with the preparation and everything, but, you know, there's, there's a lot to go on from now on. Australian John Pearce teamed up with Finland's Henry Kontinen to win the doubles title for the second year in a row. That's the day in sport, Janice. Thanks so much, Darren. Coming up, the weather details and wedlock.